Welcome to the drill down in depth answers to oil field questions. I'm John Spears. And I'm Richard Spears. Rich, um, I know you're still on the road, not back here in Oklahoma yet. You might have missed some of the news, you know, uh, things that were happening in this part of the world last week. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been out in the desert, warm, uh, wearing my shorts and a t-shirt. Why? What happened? <laughs> we had some cold weather last week, and I thought that um, there was an awful lot of news. Of course, there was uh, just some remarkable things that were happening. And um, I know that we want to talk about, you know, the oil and gas sector. So I thought I would, we get to that point, but um, my my thought is that there were a lot of big numbers that, uh, that we all saw last week uh, associated with this cold freeze. But I think the most important number was something that uh, got overlooked. So um, that's oh, what I'm. Uh, that's what I have in mind to talk about today. So because you know, if you if you were to ask our yeah. uh, our yeah. uh, great friend and colleague Dave Hutchison down in Houston, Texas, the only yes. number he cared about was zero because <laughs> that's how much electricity and water was coming into his yeah. house. And I, so the number tough. is not zero, I guess. No, 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 no. Uh, along with that, so it, you know, the pro it got so cold. Last week, How cold did it here, get? <laughs> yeah, in Oklahoma, the price of uh, One Oak's uh, gas transmission system almost twelve hundred dollars per million BTU. That it reached that last Wednesday. Wait, wait, twelve hundred. Oh. And what did it? What it? What would it have been? Say the prior Wednesday, you know, six or nine or something <laughs> like that. Out in Waha, you know, out there in West Texas, the spot oh. price at that clearing uh, that hub. Uh, hit $200 per million BTUs last week. Um, you know, we got to uh, $9,000 per megawatt hour there in Texas, all in numbers that were just multiples, hundreds of times higher than what they had been uh, last week. The, the uh, overall, the spot price of gas last Wednesday almost touched $24 per million BTU. That's like for the nation as a whole, it got to there oh. on Wednesday. Last week, well, so. you know, I was buying propane in yes. Palm Springs, California, and it was <laughs> astronomically high. And yeah. and I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts, so clearly sure. something was going on across. Well, the you street. know, you know, uh, you know, President Biden wants us all to be uh, to have net zero emissions. You know, here pretty soon. We almost got the net zero production last <laughs> week, so um, that's a start, I suppose. Right? I turn it all off. It's net zero. Or if you want a really big number, you know, your friend uh, and my friend Charlie here would tell you that last week uh, Bitcoin hit oh. a market cap of what a trillion dollars, right? So that seems like a very big number that the producer of this program, yes. it's really the only number he cares about. <laughs> yeah. So, but my point is, all those numbers are headline news and and you know, fantastic, but they're not going to last, right? It's already warmer. Prices are coming down. These We've already forgotten. Things Right. These aren't things that have uh, are going to have much of a long long term effect on the state of the oil patch. Um, but there was a number that came out right at the end of last year or last week, I should say, that will have a long term effect on the oil patch. OK, so wait a minute. These numbers yeah. that you've been giving us, these aren't the number that no, you want no, to no, focus no, on. No. You've actually no, got a no. different number. The important price was fifty dollars per ton of carbon. So I don't so know what, what that is. Yeah, so technically that's referred to as the social cost of carbon, CSCC, social cost of carbon. And that's a number that governments use to evaluate the cost benefit analysis associated with taking, with reducing, reducing carbon emissions, okay? $50. So, Per ton of carbon. Per, per ton of carbon, yeah, emitted. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Now, so back in the Obama administration days, they had used a price of around fifty dollars per ton to um, to to about do do this kind of cost benefit analysis when it comes to, you know, do we shut down coal fired power plants, things of that nature? Do we move to higher fuel economy standards, as it were, in the transportation sector. So and then it, and it was pretty effective to get that. Oh, it was certainly right? all sorts of coal plants. Right. At that kind of a price, 
um, when you do the analysis and you think about what's the, what's the cost going to be if you put a ton of carbon in, then then there's plenty of reason to adopt some other measures to minimize carbon output, right? Under the Trump administration, they uh, they rolled that number back to less than ten dollars per ton, ton of carbon, right? Ah, so it went from fifty, went from and 50, then it went to ten. The yeah. 10 might have even gone down to one or two dollars for certain ah. types of projects. So, yeah. Ah, OK, so um, so Biden, uh, when he went back into the White House, said that um, he was going to review this social cost of carbon and come out with an interim ruling. And that's what happened last Friday. You know, there was a virtual G7 summit, and I think it was all part of that particular exercise, but they came back out and they said, okay, for the next year, when we're doing this cost benefit analysis, we're going to go back to using this $50 a ton price that was, you know, had been used back under the, uh, the Obama administration. And in the meantime, over the next 12 months, we're going to sort of rethink the whole process and because perhaps we should be using a different higher price. Oh, because it wouldn't be a different lower price. No, I don't think it's going to be a different lower price. Yeah. So it could so be a hundred. Yeah, it could or 125. There's there's a you know there's the some of the issues when you do this kind of analysis is do you just consider the impact on the US? You know, we may be emitting that carbon, but you know, it can go anywhere around the world. So do you consider the global impact of those emissions? And then the other technical question is, what kind of a discount rate do you use? The higher discount rate you use, that discounts back to a lower present value. If you use a 1% discount rate, then you get a much higher present value. So those are the kinds of things that are going to go into this um, type of analysis. But I would not be surprised if, you know, 12 months from now, roughly, that we see an even higher price for this social cost of carbon. That uh, that you know the federal government and state governments and so forth might uh, might use. It's not really a price that anybody pays. It's just the price that's used in the analysis of well, well, what's the benefit of shutting down a coal-fired power plant or a gas-fired power plant. Yeah, because because um, uh, our work over the decades, which is right. occasionally for governments, we know that there will be an environmental impact uh, project uh, evaluation that's done. Yes. to determine whether a permit will be filed and and uh, it's air quality and mm -hmm. pollution whatever sort of impact and so if they're going to use 50 bucks a ton for carbon or a hundred dollars a ton or whatever the number is right. then there could be permits that aren't allowed right oh for absolutely projects right. or expansion projects right absolutely right so for example uh you know in the biden administration they're talking about already getting to a no fossil fuel use in the power sector by 2035 well and here you know that uh, 30 percent of the gas we produce in the united states goes into the power sector here in the u.s so um so clearly those, you know, the social cost of carbon to the extent that it um, affects the kind of investments um, that are going to be um, promoted, as well as the kind of investments that's going to be penalized, um, is going to have a big effect. And, and that's just an example in the for the gas market here. So, so something uh, obviously to keep an eye on. But again, I think that's going to be with us and be more meaningful to us uh, much longer than uh, you know the spot price of gas hitting almost twenty five dollars. Million BTUs. So. Well, yeah, because because I I've thought just like most mm -hmm. disasters, most uh, you know weather events, most hurricanes, yeah. you know six months later, unless you are still displaced from your house, mm -hmm. yeah, you've you've moved on, and uh, you know New Orleans took a while, but mm -hmm. but for the most part, you know this thing hit Texas and Oklahoma, and mm -hmm. I'd say probably by uh, Easter. Folks are going to be have everything pretty well plumbed back up. Most folks, yeah, and sure. and this will be this will be a little distant. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be a distant memory. <laughs> we'll see. Distant memory. We'll see. You may not even remember about. Yeah. So now there's a whole separate issue of what's a, a carbon tax or a, a price for. 
for carbon, what might that be? And I think that we'll talk about that in another episode here on the podcast at some later date. But um, but anyway, social cost of carbon, uh, go look it up. Keep an eye on uh, what the news is there because I think that's going to be important to us all. For and figure out where you send your check. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, so I know we have uh, another important thing to address here, and that is the uh, winner of the most recent puzzler. Yeah, so, have, right? yeah last week's puzzler, uh, mm -hmm. which we're not going to repeat here because you can just go back and listen to it on <laughs> on the YouTube or the or the whatever the streaming service is. It involved yeah. the fact that you plant tomatoes yes. and that you were uh, you had you weighed your tomatoes and they were 100 pounds of tomatoes mm -hmm. when you weighed them and they're 99 percent water and one percent tomato stuff. And mm -hmm. then you left them out in the sun and uh, you weighed them again and you realized that they were. Uh, uh, what did I say that they were? Anyway, 98% water, if I oh, remember yeah. correctly. 98% water. And so the question was, if the, if the entire box of tomatoes weighed, well, well, if it was 98% uh, water, what how did much did the total? box yeah. weigh? And exactly right. We had, uh, we had, we had actually surprisingly large number of people who gave the right answer. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, honorable mention is going to go to uh, Kelly Starr, who got it wrong. Mm -hmm. But Kelly got all the other, the prior muzzlers <laughs> right. He <laughs> didn't get this one. And uh, so sorry about that, Kelly. The winner of this week's puzzler, yes. uh, the Carney Prize, goes mm -hmm. to uh, a guy I know in Edmonton, uh, 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 Alberta, Canada. And, mm -hmm. and I can never pronounce his last name uh, right. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna super, I'm gonna apologize again, but it's Dan Delacqua De of uh, Volant, who like engineering manager, so he's super good at math. He gets the right answer, which is 50 pounds. That's great. That's because uh, John, what if you've got one pound of tomato stuff, mm -hmm. you yes. have 49 pounds of water. That's 98 percent. And 98 percent water. There you go. So that the answer to last week's puzzler is 50 pounds. And congratulations, and Dan and Edmonton. Well, you know, and he did that in Canadian units as well, not, you know. <laughs> well, that's right. So he had to convert it back to uh, American units <laughs> afterwards. But he's good at math, that like most, enough, of our, uh, most of our listeners. Sounds good. Well, I want to thank everyone for listening uh, to this week's uh, Drill Down, um, in-depth answers to all questions. I'm John Spears. And I'm Richard Spears. Thank you.